calculating the greatest common divisor through prime factorization. At the start of the school year, Leo and Eva's school always collects school supplies and textbooks for those families who find it difficult to buy new supplies every year. They've finished the drive, and now they have to put everything they've collected into boxes to give out. 400 cases of colored pencils and 350 books. They want to help the maximum number of families possible with boxes that all contain the same materials. What is the greatest number of families they can help? What can we do to work it out? Hmm, what can we do? If we divide 400 by 350, I don't think so. What would that give us? Um, calculate the least common multiple, LCM. I don't think so. We want a number that's greater than that. Add 350 plus 400 and divide between the families? I don't think so. Calculate the greatest common divisor, GCD? Yeah, I think this is it. Calculate the greatest common divisor. Very good! We calculate the greatest common divisor because it's the highest number that we can divide both 350 and 400 by to get an exact result. Eva wants to calculate the greatest common divisor the way we learned it in the previous tutorial, finding all the divisors of 400 and then of 350. We'll start with 400. What is 400 divided by 2? 400 divided by 2 equals 200. Exactly! And since the remainder is 0, we found the first divisor of 400. Now we're going to divide by 3. Since the remainder isn't 0, we know that 3 isn't a divisor of 400. Now we divide 400 by 4, which is... 400 divided by 4, that's easy, that's 100. 100. Perfect! And since the remainder is 0, we found the second divisor of 400. We move on to the number 5. 400 divided by 5 equals 80. And since the remainder is 0, we know that 5 is a divisor. Now we try with 6. We can see that 6 is not a divisor of 400. Now 7. 7 is not a divisor of 400. Then 8, which is a divisor. 9 isn't. 10 is. And 11 isn't. 12 isn't. Oof! We've performed a lot of divisions, and there are a lot left to do, just to find the divisors of 400. Leo thinks they can do it by factorizing 350 and 400. When we factorize a number, we find the divisors of that number. And prime factorization gives us the most factors. Let's start. Choose the method you prefer and factorize 400. Let's try method 2. Okay, so 400 gives us 2. Excellent! What is 400 divided by 2? 400 divided by 2 equals 200. Yes! Very good! Now continue. Okay. 200 can also be divided by 2. What is 200 divided by 2? That's easy. 200 divided by 2 equals 100. Now carry on by yourself. 100 can also be divided by 2. And we know that 2 times 50 gives us 100. So 50. 50 divided by 2. Um, gives So 50 divided by 2 gives us 25. Perfect. And we know that 25 equals 5 times 5. We've finished the prime factorization of 400. Now look at this. Bearing in mind the prime factorization of 400, 
and knowing that the decomposition of 10 is 2 multiplied by 5. Will 10 be a divisor of 400? So we know that 10 equals 2 multiplied by 5, 2 and 5, and we see that 400 has 2 and 5. So yes, it can be uh, divided into 400, or 10 is a divisor of 400, yes. Of course! We can also find the prime factors of 10 in the decomposition of 400. And 14? Is it a divisor of 400? I don't think so. 14 equals 2 times 7. So it does, 400 does have 2, but it doesn't have a 7. So, no. 14 is not a divisor of 400. Of course not! 14 is not a divisor of 400. Because although the factor 2 is common to both numbers, 7 is only a factor of 14. And 32? Is it a divisor of 400? 32 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 400, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. But we are missing one other two, so no, 32 is not a divisor of 400. I don't think so, no. Exactly! 32 isn't a divisor of 400 because, although 2 is a factor of both numbers, it only appears 4 times in the factorization of 400, and it appears 5 times in the factorization of 32. Now find a divisor of 400 that isn't 1 or 400. Drag the prime factors to find a divisor that isn't 1 or 400. Okay, so let's try 2 times 2 times 2. Excellent! The prime factors of a number contain all the prime factors of all its divisors. Therefore, by combining the factors with each other, we always get a divisor of that number. For example, 20 is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5. Or take 80, which is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5. And by making all the possible combinations, we get all the divisors. This strategy is really useful to find the divisors of 400. It's quicker and easier than doing so many divisions. Leo has just realized that this method will help us find the common divisors and the greatest common divisor of 350 and 400, so they can quickly work out how many families the school collection will help. Now we're going to factorize 350 into prime numbers. Okay. So 350 ends in 0, so that means it is divisible by 2. Excellent! Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. 350 divided by 2 is like 300 divided by 2, which equals 150, plus 50 divided by 2 equals 25. So 150 plus 25 equals 100 and 75. Yes! Very good! Okay, so 175 can be divisible by 5. What is 175 divided by 5? Okay, so 175 divided by 5 is like 150 divided by 5 equals 30 plus 25 divided by 5 equals 5, so 30 plus 5 equals 35. This is easy. Perfect. So 35 equals 5 times 7. We finished the prime factorization of 350. Now that we've factorized the two numbers, we're going to look for common divisors. Looking at the prime decomposition and knowing that the decomposition of 10 is 2 multiplied by 5, is 10 a common divisor of 350 and 400? 
10 equals 2 times 5, and we have 2 and 5 here, and 2 and 5 under 400. So yes, 10 is a common divisor of both 350 and 400. Yes. Of course, we can find the prime factors of 10 in the decomposition of both 400 and 350. And 14? Is it a common divisor of 350 and 400? 14 equals 2 times 7. Uh, so yes, it is a common divisor of 350, uh, but it's not a common divisor of 400. We do see a 2, but we are missing a 7. So, nope. Exactly. 14 is a divisor of 350. But it isn't a divisor of 400, because we don't find 7 among its prime factors. And 4? Is 4 a common divisor of 350 and 400? 4 is definitely a common divisor of 400, but it is not a common divisor of 350. Nope. Exactly. 4 is a divisor of 400, but it isn't a divisor of 350, because the 2 only appears once among its prime factors. Eva got it. Now, thanks to the factors of each number, we can find any common divisor, and the largest of them all, the greatest common divisor, will be the number that is made by the product of most common divisors. Help them find all the common factors. Select all the factors that 350 and 400 have in common. Okay, so they have 2 in common, 2 and 2. Um, and they also have 2 5s in common. And another 5. Exactly! Now we've got it. The common factors are 2, 5, and 5. So the greatest common divisor of 350 and 400 is 50. 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5. To find the greatest common divisor through the factorization method, the first thing we have to do is decompose the numbers into prime factors. 400 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 5 squared. 350 is equal to 2 multiplied by 5 squared multiplied by 7. Then we take the common factors with the smallest exponent. The common factors are 2 and 5. The smallest exponent of 2 is 1, and the smallest exponent of 5 is 2. Therefore, the greatest common divisor of 350 and 400 is equal to 2 multiplied by 5 squared, which is equal to 50. Great! Now, Leo and Eva know they're going to be able to help 50 families. Each family will receive 8 cases of colored pencils and 7 textbooks. We're going to look at one more example. Let's calculate the greatest common divisor of 120 and 140, just as we've learned. First, factorize 120 into prime numbers. Okay. 120 ends in 0, so we know it, it, it is divisible by 2. Excellent! And 2 times what gives us 120? 2 times 60. Yes! Very good! Uh, 60 also ends in 0, so we know it, it, it is divisible by 2. And 60 divided by 2 equals 30. Similarly, 30 also ends in 0, so yep, we know it's divisible by 2. And 2 times 15 equals 30. Perfect, and this one's easy. We know that uh, 15 equals 3 times 5. Good. Now do the same with 140. Great. So we can know that 140 also ends in 0, so that means it, it is divisible by 2. Excellent! 2 times 
70 equals 140. Yes, very good. 70 is also divisible by 2 because it ends at 0. And 2 times 35 equals 70. So 70 divided by 2 equals 35. Um, and 35 we know equals 5 times 7. Now select the common factors of both numbers. Okay, so they have two twos in common and one five. Next, write the operation. Okay, so since they both have two twos, we can say two squared. And they also have one five in common, so let's select that. So two squared times five. Amazing! Finally, solve the problem. To You'll get the greatest oops. common divisor of 120 and 140. Okay, so 2 squared equals 4. 4 times 5 gives us 20. Yep, 20. Amazing! Let's keep practicing. <laughs> 